Hello, and welcome to the GBC Productions channel. This is episode 79, which is also part 3 of the engine rebuild. We're going to start by getting the cylinders ready. We're going to deglaze them. In the process of deglazing, I discovered there's a little bit of a ridge here. I have a ridge reamer, and I'm going to go ahead and remove the ridge. So to use the ridge reamer, I put it all the way in to these little lips, and then I'll tighten the bolt in the middle, and then I'll rotate it. And I'll keep turning it and tighten that bolt a little bit each time. I'll do this for all six. Now for the deglazing. I'm going to spray it down with WD-40. And we're going to take a cylinder hone and put it in there. It's mounted to a drill. And just like that, this cylinder is done. And then I'll move on to the others. I'll do the rest of them and then I have to clean up. Here's what one of them looks like, all finished. It looks pretty good. And this is before starting. With the cylinders done, I've gone ahead and turned the engine upside down, and now I'm going to replace the cam bearings. Here's one of them. There are three more if you look further back in there. These bearings look like they have a little mark to line up. You can see the little divot and the line right beyond the tip of my finger. I'll get the tool set up and I'll be right back. So to get the old bearings out, I have to slide the tool into the bearing. And then I'll use a 22 millimeter wrench to tighten it onto the bearing. I'll pause for a moment while I get this snugged up. It's tightened up and I have the centering cone in place. And then I've got a hammer at the end and I'll give it a few hits. The light fell down, but the bearing is out. And there's the bearing on the tool. To install them, I just put them on the tool and tap them in place. With the new cam bearings in, it's time to put in the main bearings. Now on this engine, the number two bearing is also the thrust bearing. It has that edge around it. It's pretty straightforward to put these in. There's a little tooth there, and there's a little notch, and you just make sure you line it up with it. And then this one's just a regular bearing. One thing to note on the other part of the bearing, the part that goes into the bearing cap, the little tab is right in the middle, so you really can't mix these up. This has to go in the bearing cap.
The assembly lube that I'm going to be using is the Royal Purple Engine Assembly Lubricant. I'll oil these up and then we'll set the crankshaft in. Now on this engine the bearing caps are numbered and then there are arrows pointing towards the front of the engine. Number four is a little bit different because it also contains the rear main seal. There are also seals on either side of it. Crankshaft is in, the main bearings are torqued down to 100 foot-pounds and I've also slid in the camshaft and I have lubricated the cam lobes, you can kind of see it down there. This is what I use for the cam lobes. Now it's time to put the lifters in. Now these have been soaking in oil. There is an oil passage, that little hole there. It doesn't really matter which way that goes, but I'm putting it pointing up because that's how the original ones came out. The key is to just make sure the roller is rolling on the camshaft. Then we have this bracket that will keep them from rotating. I gotta make sure I put it on the right direction though. And that keeps the lifters from rotating. Then there's a plate that holds all the lifters in place. Here's the retainer plate. And I'll just tighten the two bolts down. This will hold everything in place and keep the lifters from coming out. And that takes care of the lifters, and now we'll go on to getting the pistons installed. Now before the pistons can go in, we have to measure the ring end gap on the piston rings. So I have to put a ring in by itself and then measure the end gap. So I have a ring in, I'm going to push it down with a piston. That'll square it up and then I'll go in with a feeler gauge and measure the gap. So you can kind of see the gap there. If it's too narrow, we'll have to file it. So the gap was too narrow, and I have a ring filer here, which we're going to use to widen the gap. So I put the ring in up against the pins, and then I'll turn the crank a few times, and then measure it again. Now when the ring is filed, it'll leave a little bit of a barb. So I want to remove that barb. I'm just going to take a file and a couple of passes with the file and that'll get rid of it. I'll file across the top, the bottom, and the front. Now these two rings have been filed and they are ready to be installed. This is the upper, this is the lower. There is a marking on the ring to show which way is up. I'll see if I can get it to show up here on camera. So there's a little dimple, it's not really showing up here. It's somewhere in there. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put these onto the piston, and then we'll put the piston in. Now the piston's cleaned up pretty nicely. I still have to clean out the groove and then get some of this carbon off the top. I'll use a cleaning disc on the top, and then we'll come back and clean the grooves out. I'm using a groove cleaner here. It has one of these pieces on it that has the different size pins to clean out the grooves. 
once you have it adjusted to the right size, you just put it on the piston and then give it a few turns. So once I get this done, then it's time to put the rings on. To get the oil ring on, you put this corrugated piece on first, and then there is an upper and a lower separator. There are no tools to do this, you just do it by hand. It goes on fairly easily. There is a tool for the compression rings, so we'll start with the lower compression ring. This is the piston ring tool. You slide the ring in. I'll set the piston down for a moment. Get the ring in place. Give it a squeeze and slide it over the piston. Into the groove and release the tool. Now both rings are installed. I'll put some grease on these and then index them by making sure that the slots don't line up on the compression rings. So I index these 180 degrees and then I'm going to put the piston with the rings into this ring compressor and tighten it. So here's the ring compressor on. Everything is ready to go in. There is a nice coating of lubricant in the cylinder. The piston is also coated along with the rings. Now those two little notches point to the front of the engine. So we'll carefully lower this in. Get it down tight. I'm just going to use the handle of a rubber mallet. I'm going to move the camera just a little bit. I'll give it a hit. And then it goes. Now I have to flip the engine over, put in the rod bearings, and put on the connecting rod cap. I have the engine flipped over and the connecting rod in place with its bearing in place. And here is the connecting rod cap. I have put the bearing in. It also has a little tooth, just like on the main bearings. I have made sure to put lubricant on both sides of the bearing. Then I'm going to put this in place and tighten it down to specs. Then I have to make sure that I put this in the right direction. And then I will tighten this down to factory specs of 45 foot-pounds. So this one is torqued down. I still have to do the other five. Don't forget to subscribe for more, mash that like button, and comment below. Until next time, this is Uncle D from GBC Productions, signing off.